Now, while all of this is happening in Nigeria, we're also keeping our eyes on what's happening outside the country, especially with reports that the United Kingdom might just be this close to a third wave of COVID-19. Let's speak with Dr. Ifi Odofin, a GP in the United Kingdom. Well, Dr. Earlier today, an expert from SAGE, which is Government Scientific Advisory Group for Emergencies, says that the UK could be at the start of a third wave. Now, that might be alarmist for some, but what might a third wave look like, especially with vaccination currently ongoing? Can it be as bad as what we saw in the second wave? Hi, Kaede. Thank you for having me here. Um, yes, I did see that report that there's potentially going to be a third wave a couple of weeks ago. And we're looking at sometime end of the summer. So we're looking at, I think they said August, September. However, that report was um, a few weeks ago. And with the fact that the vaccination program is, is being ramped up really well, there might be some new suggesting evidence that the current vaccination may reduce the severity or even reduce the occurrence of a third wave. Um, the previous report did say that if a third wave occurred, we should be looking at, unfortunately, about 9,000 people dying, which is um, not close to the first and the second wave, which we've got over 120,000 people. So if that actually happens, it will be much less. But I think there might be just a little ray of hope that the vaccination program might actually reduce the amount of mortalities we should be looking at if eventually we get a third wave you know just some uh, some insight on that particular report you just I mean, quoted it came out just a moment ago it says i think the astrazeneca vaccine is now up to 90 percent effective uh, against the virus but is this for mild symptoms or for you know severe cases hospitalizations just what does it say exactly okay it says that what they're noticing is uh, the studies are showing that they're noticing that even if someone is positive it is more mild forms. So when we talk about effectivity, we're talking about severity of disease and hospital admissions. So now recently we have begun to notice that the people who have come in with severe infections are people who are younger and have not been vaccinated or who have not been vaccinated by choice. But those ones who are older, the 70s, the 80s, they have not had any severe form of disease recently. So that's quite good news. So yes, the vaccine is actually working and it may protect us against the Indian variant. Uh, whether it's too early to ask if there'll be a need for a third jab. Maybe I'll hold off on that. But uh, about this Indian <laughs> variant which you mentioned, would you say that the spread of the variant is a dent of some sort on the effectiveness of restriction measures? I mean, there were different levels and it looked as though the UK was enforcing this really, but we've seen those cases, the Indian variant especially increasing. So is it that people were not adhering to those precautions of face masks, social distancing and all, or this virus is just sneaky? I use the word sneaky. I think that's very interesting. Yes, actually, the virus is sneaky. Mm. The Indian variant itself has the ability to mutate very rapidly and evade the immune system. And its transmissibility is actually higher than the normal COVID-19 that we, all, we already know. So I don't think it's as a result of the, you know, not adhering to the rules. Generally, people in England do adhere to rules. It's just the fact that this particular variant is actually quite aggressive. And I think it's also important to remember that we've just recently um, locked down the borders a few weeks ago. A um, couple of the, our borders were open a few weeks ago to countries which had the high level of the Indian variants and people were traveling in and out of England. So I think that that's what actually has increased the, the number of cases we are seeing with the Indian variants. But I think that, like I said, I think it's not, it's certainly nothing compared to the first wave. So I think I'm quite hopeful. Well, let's wind down on this, Dr. Ify. We probably don't get to ask you enough, but haven't been on the front lines for over a year now. How have you fared and how are you doing? <laughs> Thanks for asking. I think, I think I'm much better now. Uh, at, during the time of the first wave and the second wave, I mean, I was, I was feeling the anxiety. I was quite anxious. You know, I have my family to worry about. I have my children to think about. I have my husband. So, I mean, we have gone through difficult times, but not just physically, but mentally. I mean, we are in the forefront. We have to be there. We have to go to work. We have to care for every other person. And at the end of the day, you, you know, your mind is all, you know, paranoid and, you know, you're worried, you're anxious. But I would say that, you know, with the numbers going down every day, you know, we go to work, we see the numbers. Um, recently, there has no been any death in my area. You know, things like that are quite reassuring for us. So yeah. I generally am feeling much better. I'm quite hopeful, actually. And I have been vaccinated as well.
Oh, good. <laughs> we hope it's going to be a smooth sail from here then. Well, Dr. Ifi Yodofin, thank you so much for your time on the program. It's been a pleasure. You guys have, have a good evening. Thank you. Bye.